What's up guys, my name is Hugh Miller and today we're playing some Nancy Drew, Secret of the Old Clock. I just screwed up my intro there, but you know what, we're gonna move on and forget it ever happened. This is the 12th game in the Nancy Drew series and uh, one, one of the greatest, honestly. I think it's truly a fun game. Uh, some people don't like this game for various reasons, one being <coughs> mini golf, um, but uh, I happen to be good at mini golf. So, yeah, so I'm really sorry this is taking this long to uh, actually get this walkthrough to you guys. First off, I tried to install it with my regular disc, but it didn't work. Uh, so I used a second disc and it did work. So here we are, gonna hop into this mystery on Junior, junior, uh, junior Detective. Welcome Excuse to my me. latest- The year, 1930. The place, the road to Titusville, where we find Nancy Drew behind the wheel of her blue roadster, pondering this question. Why did Emily Crandall, a girl whom Nancy knows only through their mutual friend Helen Corning, ask Nancy to drive all the way out to the Lilac Inn to see her? Does it have something to do with the fact that Emily's mother died barely a month earlier, leaving Emily to run the restaurant with only her guardian to help her? And more important, why, when she called, did Emily sound so desperate? The spunky teenager turns off the main road, blissfully unaware that Emily isn't all that waits her at the end of the driveway. No, Nancy Drew is about to get her first taste of the mystery, intrigue, and adventure that are to become her destiny. Man, so my computer just started running, like, a lot harder than it used to. But, uh, so here we are at the Lilac Inn. Let's, uh, hop into this house. And talk to this person. Well, hello. Hello. I'll bet my bloomers, you're Nancy Drew. That's right. Who are you? That's right. Are you Emily's guardian? You got it. I'm Jane Willoughby. I'm Emily's guardian, but only for the next three months until she turns 18. Then she's on her own. Ooh. Mmm. It smells like someone's been baking pies. Pies oh, are the Charlie light Rubar? specialty. We get orders from all over. Oh, that reminds me, your father called. You're supposed to call him. You can use the coin phone on the porch. All right, thank Emily you. didn't say anything about you coming until just this morning. Really? Oh, well, I'm here, and I'm singing, and I'm here. She didn't? Don't get me wrong. She can invite anybody here she wants. It's just that she's gotten so darn forgetful lately. Maybe she's just, you know, still thinking about her mom. She misses her mom, that's for sure. So do I. Glory and me, we were best friends, you know? The oh, two yeah. of us ran oh, this yeah. swell little dress shop over in Capital City. Dude. But then she got hitched and I didn't. And the next thing I know, she's writing me saying it would sure take a load off her mind if I could take care of her little girl should something ever happen to her. Well, where's where's her daddy? Where's her daddy out? Emily's father died in the war. Ooh. Cantigny, I think. Ooh. Anyway, I couldn't say no. Yikes. I mean, what are best friends for? I just wish I knew how to help Emily. What do you mean? Is she, like, not okay? I mean, yeah, I mean, she's, like, forgetting stuff, but... What? You make it sound like she's in some kind of trouble. She's been acting so... Look, go talk to her. She probably just needs to spend some time with a bear cat like you instead of some dumb Dora like me. Go on up. She's in her room. Just make like a Boy Scout and be prepared. Okie dokie. Well, let's go upstairs and talk to uh, Miss Crandall. Miss Emily Crandall. And Nancy doesn't even knock, she walks right in like she owns the place. Hello? Nancy, hi. Welcome to the Lilac Inn. Oh, and before I forget, thank you for that nice note you sent me when Mom died. Oh, no it problem. meant a lot to me. Anytime. Well, I lost my mom too, years ago. I kind of know how you feel. <laughs> sounds by. You and I may not be best friends or anything, uh, uh, but you're still by. one of the nicest no. people I know. Oh, well, thank you. I get that comment every day. I mean, not really, but... I get told often that I'm well, a, a nice you. guy, so. That's why I'm hoping you'll do me a favor, a big favor. You and your dad? My dad? What do you mean? My dad? Helen says he's a lawyer. Shh. What? What's wrong? What is it? I thought I heard something. The music. Your father has a safe, right? <gasps> yeah, dude, even I've got a safe, man. This is 1930. Lots of people have safes. See this jewelry? I'd like you to take it home with you and put it in your father's safe. Ooh. It's beautiful. It was my mother's. The few times I saw her wear it, she looked just like a movie star. I was hiding it here in my room, but all things considered, I'd feel a lot better if you would just take it home and have your father lock it up in his safe. What about, what about Jane? What about your guardian? Can't she take care of it? 
Oh, I don't want her to know I'm doing this, so don't tell her, all right? See, strange things have been going on around here. That's all I can strange say. I know it sounds loony, happen. and Jane probably told you if that I've been acting loony, but please do this for me. Oh my, what the heck? What was that? Ah! Emily, come downstairs, quick! The kitchen's on fire! What? No more pie! We better get out of here! No! Oh! I, I wanted some pie! Oh, I'm so sad now. This is horrible, just horrible! I know, no more pies! The fire chief says the stove was completely destroyed and there's smoke damage everywhere. The inn will have to shut down for months, maybe even for good. No, but... Oh, that's depressing. Does he know what caused the explosion? It looked to him like one of the burners on the stove had been left on. Jeez. The flame either went out or was never lit, but anyway, something made a spark and boom. Yeah, he said insurance clearly. companies are very reluctant to pay out when things look hinky. And that's when times are good. Jeez. Who was in the kitchen this morning? Emily was the last person to use the stove. Like I said, she's been real forgetful lately. I think she's pretty upset. But it's not her fault. What with her mom passing away barely a month ago, and me showing up, this total stranger who doesn't know the first thing about kids or running a restaurant, and her trying to do everything all by herself. Jeez. It's just too much, that's all. Who wouldn't go a little off their nut? Ugh. I don't know. I better get that. The line to the regular phone got burned up in the fire. Naturally. So now the only phone we got is the coin phone on the porch. Excuse me. I can guarantee you... Oh. What? Emily? What happened? What's wrong? Talk to me. My mother's jewelry. It's gone. Someone what? must have stolen it while we were all downstairs. Diana, I knew something volatile. like this was going to happen. I just knew it. Oh, that's so... No, that's not okay. You mean this sort of thing is happening I was going to say before? something really bad and mean, yes. but I decided I mean, not to. No, I mean... I'd rather not say, but I will say this. I did not leave the stove on. That fire was not my fault. Oh, what am I going to do? Without that jewelry, mm. I don't have a prayer of paying for a new stove. And without a stove, I'll have to sell the inn. Oh my. And if I lose the inn, I wish Mom were still here. That I wish sucks. Josiah Crowley had left us the money like he always said he was going to. That's what I wish. Who? Who's Josiah Crowley? He was this old man that lived next door. He died last year. Oh. He spent most of his time here at the inn, and he led my mom and me to believe that he'd left a lot of money for us in his will. And he didn't? He gave us a clock, and afterwards, he'd always point to it and get this little twinkle in his eye and say, time will tell. But when they finally found his will, he didn't leave us a penny. That's not very nice. That's not very nice at all. Maybe he didn't leave you anything because he didn't have anything. Yeah. Oh, he didn't act like it, but he was rich. His estate was worth almost a quarter of a million dollars. Oh! He went to Richard Topham. He's this man who claims to be able to help people develop their paranormal powers. Jeez. Um, yeah, a quarter of a million dollars was worth a lot then, because at the time this game is set, which is 1930, this was like, I think during the Great Depression, so a quarter of a million dollars is a, was a lot of money. I mean, it still is a lot of money. But back then, it was, like, unbelievable. How did Josiah Crowley know him? Josiah was kind of a screwball. <laughs> One time, he showed up at my birthday party dressed as my great-aunt Harriet. I didn't know it was really him until two days later. Huh. Anyway, he had all these weird hobbies, and he always thought it would be really keen to read minds. Josiah invited Richard Topham to move in so Topham could help him develop his paranormal powers right there in his house. Huh. Josiah was a sweet old man, and I do miss him. And he was free to give his money to whomever he wanted. But to get our hopes up like that, and then leave us nothing, it just wasn't like him. Yeah, that's honestly pretty stupid. It's like, here, I'm gonna give you guys a lot of money. And then, and then, and, and then he dies, and there's, there's nothing. Where is Richard Topham now? He still lives in Josiah's house, which is right down the path out back. His house and the inn were built at the same time by two brothers during the Civil War. Do you, do you guys think Topham could have mind, Jedi mind tricked, what's his name, Josiah Crowley into leaving all the money for him? Because that'd be really, really, really low and shady of that guy. 
Was your mother's jewelry insured? 